Hi folks, Dave the Honest Audio File. This is the Sony SSCS5 and these are my Honest Audio File impressions. Before we get into reviewing the Sony SSCS5s, I've got to give a disclaimer. I need to play the rookie card, but I can't play the rookie card because I've already reviewed a passive speaker. So I'm going to play the second review card. <laughs> so my experience with speakers is very limited. I own two powered monitors and two passive speakers and very limited on gear associated with speakers. Now I've heard speakers at audio shows, friends' houses, uh, relatives' houses, things like that. So I've heard a lot of gear. I've just never reviewed it or had it in my house. So my experience is very limited on a personal level. So bear with me as I do my second ever review of a passive speaker. All right, so the Sony SSCS5s. Sony, if you're listening, please. Start using more traditional model names, please. Anyways, the Sony SSCS5s. These are a three-way passive speaker. They weigh 9.92 pounds. Yes, this is a hefty boy for a bookshelf. And it's big. When I, when I say big, I mean it's 13.19 inches tall. It's seven inches wide and it is uh, 8.6 inches deep back ported. As you can see, and there is your binding post. There's your three way on the front. And this here is a 5.12 inch cone woofer. This is a, what size is that? Uh, 0.98 inches. So basically a one inch tweeter. And then you've got this itty bitty little super tweeter. The frequency response is 53 hertz to 50 kilohertz. And apparently this little tweeter is the, the one that has the abilities to go from 20K to 50K. They're six ohms and uh, they have a maximum input of 100 watts and uh, they're 87 decibels of sensitivity. Cabinets made of PP sheet, double P sheet, and it's got a cloth grill. I think they look a whole lot better with the, without the grill on, so I like using speakers without the grills. Um, I find that they're just more attractive that way. All right, so anyways, the Sony SSCS5. Gear that I use them with. I use them with the VMV A2, which is a DAC with a speaker amp, MyTech Liberty DAC, and also the Odyssey Deckard. Both of those going into the A2. Also had a PS Audio Sprout Gen 1 and a Mica Aura Game. Most of the sound impressions were done with the A2 with the A2's DAC and amp but also the MyTech Liberty DAC and the Odyssey Deckard were DACs going into A2. Those were the most of the setup that I used. How do they sound? The Sony SSCS5s. <laughs> Sorry, the Sony SSCS5s. They have a very unique sound and they're finicky. They have a uh, very much a dependency on placement. So when I first got them, I used them with a very small stand. I was using them with the fluid stand and it's about four inch. And I really, really struggled. Uh, they were basically shooting directly right here. And I, no matter how I pointed them, all I got was treble and they were extremely shouty. And if I leaned super far back or if I stood up, it got a little better. 
but at my normal listening position, they were just absolutely destroying my ears on some music. And I was just like, man, these things are intense. So I used a, a riser on it and tried tilting them. I tried moving them. I got them to different angles. And then if I got them too close to the wall, they became very boomy and bassy and, and thumpy. If I pulled them away, the bass would disappear and the treble would just become intense. And so I was, I was kind of like getting a little, mm, I, was, I was a little concerned. And then, as you can see, I have different speaker stands. And those are the Knox speaker stands. And I'll put descriptions down below to all the gear that I mentioned in this review. And the, the Knoxes are taller than the fluids. So that helped to a degree. And then also the angle of them is a little bit better. And so now they're kind of tweeters are kind of right here on my ears. And they're not roasting my ears like they were. Plus I was able to angle them a little bit better and tow them in. And I found the sweet spot. And once you find a sweet spot with the Sony's, the sound goes, whoa. But if you have them off by just a, a, a smidge, you're like, ooh. It's kind of like eating those sour candies, the gummy worms with the, the sugar that are sweet and sour and tart. You put one in your mouth and you're like, hmm, it's pretty good. And you put the next one in, you know, ooh, ooh. That's the way the experience was with the Sony's, even with the different speaker stands. They're a little bit finicky and they're hard to explain. But I'm gonna try. All right, so the base. The base of the Sony is powerful. It's got nice authority. It's got good details and, and it's got nice resolution to it. It's a little rolled off on the bottom end, so if you want to add in a subwoofer to complement and to fill in, it definitely does help. And I found that I use a mono price uh, subwoofer, link down below, and that when when set up to make it sound like the the bass is coming from the Sony's themselves instead of from the sub subwoofer, that it sounds very good. It has a nice fullness, good extension to it, and the details are there. It's not the best bass though. It's a little bit more quantity than quality. It, on some tracks and at times it'll just kind of distort a little bit, get a little mumbled, a little jumbled, and it's not the most clean sounding bass, but it's a very good bass and I really do enjoy it. It's just not the best that I've heard between the speakers that I have or had at my desk. Mids. The mids on the Sony SSCS5s are very nice. They have good details, very nice clarity, excellent separation, isolation of instruments, and vocalists, and everything just kind of sounds realistic. And it's very well placed, it has extremely good details, and very good resolving. These are a very nice mid. It has a little bit of a natural warmth to it. And everything just sounds proper. Instruments sound realistic and vocalists sound like they're there with you. And I, I really do enjoy the mids of the Sony SSCS 5s And then the treble. And I like the treble, but I hate the treble. I love the treble, but I dislike the treble. It's kind of like... One of those relationships. On again, off again, on again, off again. And it'll go through your whole library you know, of music. You, you'll listen to a song, man, mm, this is good. You know, I'm, you're jamming away, you're really enjoying it. And then the next song you're, oof, eh, skip, skip, skip. And the treble is just very, very revealing. Uh, <laughs> it has clarity, but it's boosted and elevated. And it's also aggressive. And so it kind of force feeds the information in the treble and it, it will become a little bit intense and fatiguing at times. And 
also it has a slightly unnatural tone to it at times and then other times it just sounds proper and it'll just amaze you with the amount of openness and clarity and just details and just the resolving abilities of the of that the sony's have so the treble's like very confusing and it just kind of depends on the song and it definitely depends on the placement sound stage sound stage of the sony ss cs5s are ridiculously wide it is fantastic for a 2.0 system you're just amazed at how big it is and how open it is and how much everything is just placed and you can just visualize the stage so to speak you can really let your imaginations run wild when you're listening to music on the Sony's with the sound stage they do an excellent job depth and layering is good and imaging is good but it does do something a little strange so when things are going across the stage when things are traveling from one side to the other they kind of almost do it in three steps they'll go right center left they don't flow it kind of mm, mm, and goes across and you can definitely tell it's coming from this side or it's coming from this side and it doesn't quite put in and cross over i've tried so many different settings and setups and placements and i can't seem to quite get the center image to be really strong it's there but it's not like this is the center this is your placement it's more like it's right in here you know it's like you have a little circle instead of mm, this is it and i like all, all the details and the way that they travel and you can kind of go that's that that there 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 yep, 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 you know, and place things but they're kind of we're over in this neighborhood it's not the most precise sounding stage so i really like the sony's they're fun they're engaging they're sparkly they're energetic but there's just something about them that goes hmm and it didn't matter what DAC I had on it it was very revealing of the differences in DACs the MyTech was very open very natural and articulate and had very good depth and layering in the stage and had exceptionally good imaging and had really good tone and timbre and everything just had a nice airy approach I, I liked the MyTech the best actually of all the DACs he had the Decker. The Decker added a little bit of warmth, toned down the treble a little bit, which was nice. But it did compress the stage in just a little bit, but it added a little bit of body and a little bit more fun sound to it. The VMV A2 DAC was kind of in between the MyTech and the Audizé. It had a nice openness to it, very good tone and timbre, did really good details and resolution. And I... I really enjoyed the abilities of the sound stage that it revealed and the depth and the layering and all that kind of stuff. But all the time that center state center image was just kind of a little bit more circular than dead center straight on. And then using the Sprout Gen 1. The Sprout Gen 1 has a very nice, warm, somewhat laid back presentation, very enjoyable did tone down the treble just a little bit but rounds off the edges a little bit so it, it's a nice more pleasing sound but it's not quite as accurate with the details and in the resolution as the MyTech was and it just it, it has a very chill factor to it and then the mica organ the mica organ is a little bit more bombastic in the bass and was a little bit more compressed in the sound stage and it just didn't quite sound as realistic and as natural and tone and timbre as the other decks did. How's it compare to the Wharfdale? Now the Wharfdale, this is my reference speaker. Definitely a lot smaller, lighter, and I think it's cuter. Plus it has that unique bottom port. And the Wharfdale, in my opinion, is more refined and more defined than the sony the bass on it doesn't get confused and distorted mumbled and jumbled 
like the Sony can at times. The mids have a more or, organic feel to them, more natural um, sense to them, a little bit more body weight to them. They're not quite as separated out as the Sony's, but in my opinion, the Wharfdales are more naturally true to the recordings, at least the way my imagination would think that the recording sounds. And then into the treble, the Wharfdales are not as open and as a force feeding of the sound. They're not as aggressive. And in my opinion, the Wharfdale does a better job of portraying the actual naturalism of, of treble with the proper moments of harshness, edginess, sh sharpness, sibilance, and um, just overall sparkle and energy. The Wharfdale does it in a more controlled way than the Sony. Soundstage-wise, the Sonys are bigger, they are wider, they are more stretched, though, than the Wharfdale. The Wharfdale, in my opinion, does a better job of portraying a natural reproduction, whereas the Sonys are trying to enhance it and be a little bit more uh, imaginative of the presentation. So I like the Wharfdale. I think the Wharfdale is the more true reference sound, whereas the Sony is a little bit more enhanced. If you're looking for more details and you want a little bit more force feeding, a little bit more separation, the Sony's are also very good at that and they do very good with tone and timbre, but I find that the Wharfdale is a little bit more accurate. It's been Dave, the honest audio file. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you on the next video. Speaking of next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links, notification bells. If you haven't already, check those off. And then don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video. Check out all the links down below. There's all kinds of information regarding the gear that was mentioned in this review. Also, there's information regarding tier lists and rankings and music recommendations, all kinds of other things down below. And then don't forget to enjoy the music. And honesty is the best policy.